Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner where I share three really easy and delicious meals with you. Okay, it has been a day. I've been very busy all day long. I just went to the grocery store to get the ingredients for this week's meals. The other two meals that I'm going to share this week are going to be crock pot meals, which I've never really done a lot of crock pot meals in the spring and summertime. I always think of fall and winter, but it makes sense to do them in the spring and summer because you're not heating up your kitchen with your oven and your stovetop and all of that. So the next two meals after tonight you will see are going to be crock pot meals, one of which maybe both, you could do in the Instant Pot instead. But tonight's dinner, I needed something that was pretty quick, so I chose our Subby Supper for the week. So this week, instead of the third meal being Subby Supper, it's gonna be our first meal. So let's get started. So today's Subby Supper, I'm really excited about. It is called French Onion, Chicken, and Green Beans. French Onion and Green Beans makes me think of green bean casserole, so this sounded good to me. Today's Subby Supper comes from Marvette. Marvette is from Chattanooga, Tennessee. She has been married for 12 years. They have an 18-year-old daughter, a 12-year-old son, and a 9-year-old son. She works in customer service at home, from home, and she also homeschools her two boys. She said she created this recipe a couple of years ago, and they really enjoy it. She sent me a yummy picture of the recipe, as well as this beautiful picture of her. So thank you, Marvette, so much for sending this over, for creating this. I have a feeling we're going to love it. We're gonna use chicken thighs for this, but she said you could use chicken breast as well, but we just kind of prefer thighs. Let's get started. Okay, so Marvette said to use two pounds of either chicken breast or chicken thighs. We're gonna go with like 2.25 pounds. That's just what this one was. I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper these. I do have my oven preheating to 400 as well. So we've got this cast iron skillet heated to about medium, medium high. I've got a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil in there and we're just gonna brown our chicken thighs on one side for just a few minutes and then we'll flip them. We're just gonna salt and pepper them on the other side before we flip them. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Steven's gonna go ahead and flip them. And once we get them flipped, we're gonna add in our diced onion. Okay, now we're just gonna let the second side brown. And once it is browned, we will move on to our next step. Okay, now we're gonna add in a can of French onion soup. And we're gonna add in this large family size can or 28 ounce can of French style green beans. You can use whatever style you want, but we did drain it first. <laughs> okay, now we're just gonna put it in the 400 degree oven for 20 minutes until our chicken is done. And then we will add one more thing on top when we're done. Okay, our subby supper is in the oven. I've got mashed potatoes going in the Instant Pot. And I wanted to really quickly jump on here and tell you how to submit a subby supper if you've never done so. I, I used to always say that, but now I keep forgetting to say it. You just email me. Email me at mandyinthemaking2018 at gmail.com. And in the subject, make sure you put subby supper. I get a lot of submissions, so if you don't hear back from me, don't be disheartened. I might still choose yours. It just takes me a while to get through them all. Okay, it's been in there for 20 minutes. Let's kind of move these around a little bit. And now we're going to add a package of French fried onions right on top. Thank you. 
Okay, it's gonna go back in for 10 more minutes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those thighs, mmm, just tender. That's what we're looking for. You don't right need there. enough. Nope. I don't even need this now. I don't even know why I have it. <laughs> Trying to be all proper. <laughs> Baby, you ain't been a proper a day in your life. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that deserved a wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody is happy. I'm just real happy about that. <laughs> I'm happy because the thighs are cooked right. They got great flavor. I mean, you've got all the French onion goodness going on, plus the onions in there. Yeah. With the green beans, but that sauce, with the thighs, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Well, as much as I'm enjoying watching you eat, mm. it's time for me to eat. Marvet, I'm speechless. Mm. Cole, what did you say? I, I just don't know where to start about how good this is. Right. This is, this is just amazing. It is so incredibly good. This mm. may end up in our next favorites. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, wow. Steven wasn't lying when he said, wow. Well. You better be making this tomorrow, though. I got <laughs> Y'all need to make this. This is amazing. Thank you so much for this recipe creation and for submitting it, Marvette. Oh, my word. Okay, that's enough talking. I got to dig, dig back in. Hey, y'all. It is our second meal of the week. And tonight, I'm just making some Southwest chicken tacos. We're going to do them in the crock pot. I've got a full day. And I know at the end of this day, I'm not really going to want to cook. So I'm gonna let the crock pot do the cooking. Let's go. The recipe calls for an onion coarsely chopped, so I'm gonna do that really quickly. It doesn't call for jalapeno, but y'all know that we love spicy stuff, so I'm gonna be adding in a jalapeno as well. I'm not gonna take out all of the seeds, I'll just take out the seeds on one side, leave a little bit of heat in there. I'm gonna go ahead and open this can of black beans and drain and rinse them. And then we're ready to put everything in the crock pot. Okay, I've got one pound of chicken breasts here. I'm gonna put them in the bottom. I'm using my smaller crock pot today because it really doesn't have that many ingredients. No need to use my larger one. I'm going to sprinkle those with my homemade taco seasoning. I will leave that recipe below. It says to use one tablespoon, but I'm probably gonna use more like two tablespoons. Let's throw in all of our onion and our jalapeno. I've got a cup of frozen corn. My black beans. And it says you could either use half or all of a jar of salsa. I'm gonna use probably three fourths. I'm gonna go right there in the middle. Now I'm gonna kinda of stir this around a little bit and see if I can't get some of the sauce and veggies to go underneath the chicken just so the chicken doesn't stick to the bottom. And that's it. So tonight when this is done, I will just take the chicken out and shred it 
put it back in and then we'll just put it on taco shells and taco Tuesday it is. I'm gonna put this on low for eight hours. If you wanted to do it on high, you could do it for like three hours or you could even make this meal in the Instant Pot. It would be just as simple and take like 15 minutes. Okay, it's been all day. I checked the chicken a little bit earlier. Checked the chicken, I said that right? A little bit earlier and it was already done, so I just turned it over to warm. I am gonna go ahead and remove the chicken and shred it. You could always just shred it directly in here, but I think it's just gonna be a little bit easier to remove it. I've been gone for the most part of the day. I got home a couple of hours ago and switched this over to warm. The guys are over at Stephen's mom's house right now doing her yard, but when they get home, dinner is served. Gracie, honey, you can't have the chi this chicken. It's spicy. Are you mad about it? You can't have it. You smell it, don't you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll give you some cheese in a little bit, okay? No. Oh. Okay, so I shredded my chicken. I'm gonna add it back into the crock pot. Grace, seriously, honey, can I please? Thank you. Okay, <laughs> let's stir this up and let it kind of soak up all of the juices. I cannot with her. Okay, the guys will be home any minute. And when they come home, it's gonna be time to eat. Oh, I bought some new type of taco shells. They're probably not new, they're new to us. We've never tried them, let me show you. It's these, the nacho cheese. Yes, please. I've also got some soft tortillas because Cole prefers those, but I thought these would be good. These guys are so tired and so hungry. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. How <laughs> much juice is in there? Yeah. It's so I was gonna good. say that. Super Lots juicy? Of, super mm -hmm. juicy. Um got the Southwest flavors in there going yep, on. It's Southwest tacos. It's all Southwest. Got the, I love the shell. This shell. Yeah, the cheesy shell. Yes. <laughs> okay, like I'll definitely get those. taco standard. Yes, right okay, I'll keep getting those. I mm -hmm. like them because they're the stand and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they stand up on their own after you stuff them. Mm -hmm. You like the guacamole edition on top? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one's a hit. I'm mm -hmm. a little jealous of that guacamole over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can't have guacamole. I like, the sh I like the way that you shredded the chicken up in here too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna give it a try. So I totally forgot to jump on there and tell you what I thought of the chicken tacos. Me and Gracie are just hanging out on the couch. Um, right when we started dinner, I got a reminder that I had a Zoom call. I was supposed to be on a Zoom meeting that I was supposed to be on. So <laughs> I had to just put myself on mute in the Zoom meeting and join the Zoom meeting and eat. So I didn't get to jump back on and tell you how much I loved them. They were so good. I'm glad that I added the jalapeno in there, and then I also added jalapeno to our guacamole, so it gave it a little kick of spice, and we really enjoyed that. So I highly suggest that, and I think we'll be making that a lot just because it was a true just dump it all in the crock pot, go on about your day, and you've got dinner. It was great. Okay, y'all, it is our third meal of the week. Tonight, I am doing a crock pot sausage and potatoes recipe. I'm going to be halving the recipe, so I'm not gonna use this whole bag. Um, I'm only using one kielbasa sausage because it calls for two, you get the drift. But I'll link the recipe below. The recipe originally feeds eight. Obviously, there's three of us, we don't need it, so that's why I'm halving it. I 
I've been letting my hash browns sit on the counter for the past couple of hours just to kind of thaw them out. Um, it calls, the original recipe calls for 30 ounces of hash browns. This is 26 and I need about half of this bag. Now it calls for one whole can of cheddar cheese soup. So I won't use quite the whole can. Now I need some evaporated milk. It calls for, I'll need about five ounces, which is exactly the size that I have. A couple of cloves of minced garlic. And lastly, it says salt and pepper. I'm gonna use Auntie Nono's. You, you know I love this um, seasoning blend. I just think it's really good, so we're gonna use this. I'm just gonna mix all of this together. Now we're just gonna add in our Kiyabasa sausage and stir that all together, and then we're just gonna dump it in the crock pot. I am gonna spray my crock pot first with some nonstick spray. But that's it, y'all, and dinner will be ready. I'll probably make, I don't know if I'll make some green beans on the side. I'll figure something out for the side tonight, but yeah, this is really easy and hopefully really tasty. Okay, you could do this on low for six hours or you could do what I'm doing on high for three hours. I know it says four, but it is 2.13. Dinner will be ready right around five o'clock. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cheesy potato goodness. This, this is amazing. <laughs> Are you serious? It's really this, is, good. this is so good. Where did you find this? I just found it online, Pinterest, you know me. Keep it. Keep it. Mm -hmm. That's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. So that, that tells me it's two thumbs up mm -hmm. if you say keep oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. Hold up, hold up, hold up. There, we, there go. we go. The creamy cheesiness of the potatoes. And then we got the, the sausage. What kind of, what is that, is it just kielbasa? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. I love it. I wasn't expecting the sausage taste to be so infused into the potatoes. I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. I mean, it cooked in there all day. But that was a nice surprise. The potatoes don't just, they're not bland, just cheesy potatoes. They have that sausage flavor. It's so good. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you probably haven't seen our new centerpiece. I went up to Hendersonville, North Carolina yesterday and purchased the tray, the little bird, which I love, and then this vase and the florals from a little shop up there called Southern Chicks Market. I love their shop. They are on Facebook. And I'm pretty sure they will ship things to you if you order online, so, or order from her Facebook. So go check them out. Um, Sheila is the owner and she is so sweet. Excuse me, I'm talking. You're very rude, Grace. Okay, we're gonna make a dessert. Usually I finish the video after my third recipe, but since the two crock pot recipes were pretty short and sweet, I figured I would show you a dessert recipe that I discovered last year. I made it several times last year and tweaked it. Um, yeah, so I printed these recipes from online and then I tweaked them to be more to our liking. We're gonna be making a pie crust and a strawberry pie filling to go in the pie crust. So we're making a strawberry pie. Dinner is still in the crock pot. Um, you're seeing this after we've already done our taste test for dinner tonight. Hopefully it was good. Dinner is in the crock pot, but I want to have dessert for later as well. So I'm going to make that now. I don't know if at the last of 
part of that video clip, you could hear the buzzing, but we had a hornet inside and Steven tried to get it, but we aren't sure that we got it. I'm looking over there where it was. So I'm on high alert. Don't want to get stung by a hornet. Call me crazy, but doesn't sound like my idea of a good time. But let's get started on the pie crust. Okay, you need a nine inch pie pan, but I'm pretty sure mine is a 10 inch, which might be part of the problem. So I say problem because my crust almost always falls apart. So you bakers out there who can give me some tips, I'm all ears. But we're just going to put everything here in the pie crust or in the pie plate. I need a cup and a half of all purpose flour, two teaspoons of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt. This is where I changed it up a little bit. I think it called for, yeah, it calls for one teaspoon of salt. Mm -mm, we do about a half a teaspoon. A half a cup of vegetable oil. And lastly, two tablespoons of milk. I'm just gonna stir all of this together with a fork. Okay, and now we're just going to press this all around the bottom of the pan and starting up the sides, but like I mentioned, this is a little bit bigger pie plate, so I don't get it too far up the sides, unfortunately. It's just easier to do this with your hands. That's good enough. I should have been preheating my oven, but I forgot, so let me go turn the oven to 400. I wasn't even thinking about it. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I was able to pick up some fresh strawberries from a local produce stand. Strawberry season has hit. These are the very first ones, so I'm very excited about it. Me and my mom decided to split this really large container, this bucket. So I'm gonna wash up some strawberries and cut them, and then we were gonna put this in the oven. Still waiting on it to preheat. The oven just beeped, it is ready. Our pie crust is going in at 400 for 15 minutes or until it's like a light golden brown. Some of these are going to go kind of whole in the pie itself and then others are gonna be mashed up. Okay, I've got, this is a four cup measuring cup. <laughs> I've got four cups of sliced strawberries in here. Some of these will go directly into the shell and then the rest are just gonna get mashed up. So technically I didn't have to slice up all of them, but it just makes it easier to measure for sure. Okay, we are still waiting on our pie crust to come out, but I'm going to put half of these strawberries into this saucepan and we're gonna put in three fourths a cup of sugar. I also changed this. I thought the first time I made it, it was a little too sweet. I think it calls for a cup. So I do about three fourths a cup. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mash, start mashing these up as much as I can. And then we will turn on the eye to medium and we'll bring this to a boil. This meat masher is not just for meat. Okay, I'm gonna turn this to medium and let that start to heat up. Okay, our strawberries are almost up to a bowl. Now what I'm gonna do is take three tablespoons of cornstarch and add it to three-fourths a cup of water. Stir it around really good. And we're gonna add this into the strawberries once they come up to a bowl. And this will just make it thicken. It'll probably take five to 10 minutes for it to thicken really well and then we'll just pour it in here. Okay, it is boiling. Let's add this in. Once I add it in, I am gonna reduce the heat and we're gonna stir it pretty much constantly. Let's turn the heat down to medium low and start stirring. So I totally forgot, I've got to put these other strawberries on the bottom, so Steven's gonna handle that for me so I can go back over there and stir. There you go, just kind of spread that out. Thank you. Okay, this has thickened. I don't know if you can tell. 
but it has. So that means it's ready to go in the pie shell. Okay y'all, it's done. This pie plate is still very hot, so I'm gonna put on my oven mitts, stick this in the fridge. It just needs to chill for several hours. I don't know that we'll try it tonight because it's already almost five o'clock and we don't like to eat sugar very late because it keeps us up because we're old. Hashtag old. So I may have to try this tomorrow for y'all, but that's fine because tomorrow is Thursday. I still have time to get this in my what's for dinner, but we've had it numerous times. It's good, I promise. Okay, hey y'all, it is the next day. This has set up. Let's give it a try. It did not crumble as bad as I expected it to. I mean, check that out. Maybe I'm getting better at it. Normally, I just make our own whipped cream because I really enjoy that, but we already have this on hand and I need to be using it up. I got it for coffee, but since we have it, might as well use it, right? That might be a little overkill, but it'd be all right. I'm so excited, my mouth is watering. Steven is on phone calls all day today, so he's not gonna be able to do a taste test with me. Get your hair out of your face. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to get me some. You want some? I'll get me some right now, yeah. You're in the cabinet. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Where's the scoop? You said it didn't crumble as much? It didn't crumble quite as much. It still crumbles a little bit, but... The strawberry pie is amazing. It's the first thing I want to do as soon as we get strawberries every year. Well, I'll say every year. Every year from now on. Last year was my first time making it. And it was trial and error when I first started because the first couple were not that great. Yes, I said first couple. We went through a lot of strawberries last year. Let me just tell you a little, a little backstory. Steven's dad lives, lived on a road that at the end of the road, there's a strawberry patch. It's not a huge one but they do sell strawberries. And he was always one of their first customers every season. He got so excited. And he would call us up and say, hey, I got strawberries, come get some. So this year, getting strawberries, the first time was very bittersweet because usually we got our strawberries from Papa. Um, so this strawberry pie is in honor of Stephen's death. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching this week's What's for Dinner. I was so excited to be able to include this dessert for you as well. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Let me know below, do you plan on making the strawberry pie? If you do and you know how to perfect the crust, leave it in the comments below. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button before you go. See y'all next week.